Mm -hmm. Okay, so lesson three. Today we are tackling five blocks. Are you guys ready for five blocks? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to be doing the whirlpool, right? That should be on the top of your stack. Okay, and this we're going to be doing geese today. Okay, so the way that we do geese, there's the quilt in a day way where we actually make four geese at a time. And it, I love the way it works because every goose ends up being the same size. Okay, so the what we're going to start out, we're going to start out with technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. <laughs> oh well, here we are. But wasn't that nice? And then when. Oh, it got. Oh, you're now nice and clear. I'm nice and clear. Very nice. Nice hands. Nice hands. Nice nails, too. Nice nails. And this was my mom's ring. Oh. Yeah, she had never taken it off ever until I took it off. And so it went right away. It was traumatic, but it was okay. My mom's in a much better place. Okay, so. Anyway, back to, back to making our geese. So we're going to have a large back square, and we're going to have um, a smaller square that's going to be centered on top. And we're going to put those fabrics right sides together. And all I did was I drew a diagonal line, and I sewed on one quarter inch from both sides. And that should be in your illustrations that you have. So once they're done and sewn, I just cut them in half just like that. And when they're cut in half, it doesn't really matter which one's light and which one's dark at this point, but I'm going to go over and iron it so that the seam is going to go towards the larger of the two triangles. Okay, so I'm going to go to the iron and do that. And I believe that my iron's turned on today. I'm really excited. So I just, I'm just setting the seam and what that does, it's actually sinking your threads down into your fabrics. So when you go to press it open, you're going to get a much better crease right there. And it's going to help avoid you getting any little pleats in there or bows in your crease. You never so press something, you get that nice bow. We don't like those bows. Okay, so I'm going to do those on both. All right, so those are done. And now I'm just going to go back over to my cutting mat to lay them out. Now this time I'm going to put them right sides together and I'm going to line up all my outside edges. I don't worry about this, these two seams locking together. I do not want them to lock together. They'll be parallel though and you'll see that you have background next to dark and then you'll have the dark next to the background. So make sure that you have opposite. And then you have these cute little tails sticking out here. Okay, the little ge we call them the geese tails. So once that's done we're going to draw another diagonal line going right over that seam that we just made. Okay, and again sewing one quarter inch from both sides of that. And after that's done, we're just, I'm just going to take it and cut it in half, just right on that drawn line. So now that we have two, and I need to put a little notch right in the middle because when I go to press this, I want to press this seam going this way and this seam going this way. And can you see how we have that little problem right there? Well, if you pick up your patch and you have the seam going across the top, you're just going to fold it right in half. And I'm just going to take my scissors and make a little clip. And you want to clip down to your seam. If you accidentally clip through that seam, can you see where I clipped? If you clip through the seam, don't worry about that. We're going to have a little bit of leeway in there. You're not, you didn't like wreck it. But one thing I do want to caution you, one time I thought it was going to be really clever to take my rotary blade and just do them both at once. Don't do that because it went too far and I had to start over. Okay. So that's just something you might get this idea, but you really don't want to do it. Okay. So I have one already pressed open here. And you can see how nice and flat it is. You can look at it again from the back. And I always check from the back as well when I'm over at the mat because sometimes it, you get a little twist in there you're just not aware of. Okay? And we have, um, we have the, all flying, or the calling all geese ruler, but sometimes with the littler patches, um, I'll just pick up 
just the little ruler that I need right here. Um, and then later on today, I'm going to be showing you more of the calling on geese ruler too. It just, with all of our little difficulties, I didn't quite get over to pick up that ruler. But it works just as well. So I'm just going to take this line right here, and I'm just going to scoot it right on up. I am making a one and a half by three inch finished flying geese patch. So I'm just going to, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the two in half. I want to move this one away, and I'm just going to deal with my first one. And I'll cut on the side. The next thing that I do is I just tilt my little template, and I'm going to turn it all the way around. Now this time, when I put it back down, I am going to line up the bottom of my ruler right against the bottom of my patch. It should be really even. I've trimmed this edge, so that will be nice as even as well. And I'm just going to cut off that remaining side. And the final thing that you want to do, it doesn't look like there's very much at the top, but that little top adds up. So you make sure that you do cut on all four sides. Okay? So that's basically how we do our little geese. All right? So I just happen to have four little geese done. We make four at a time with this method. So here's what you're going to end up with with these. Okay? So that's all good. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make some peace triangle squares. And with the peace triangle squares, I'm starting with two pieces of fabric. They're going to be the same size this time. I put them right sides together, and this time I put a big X on it. And with my big X, I'm going to sew one quarter inch from both sides of that. Okay? When that's all sewn, this is what people forget to do, but the first thing I'd want you to do is I want you to cut it horizontally and vertically first. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's much easier if you cut your pieces in this order as opposed to cutting your diagonals first. And if you can, try and keep your fabrics all laid together so you, you know, can just cut them all through at once. And then I'll go ahead and cut my diagonals. And by doing this, we're actually making eight piece triangles at the same time. So you can see how I'm separating like this. Pretty tricky, huh? OK. So we're going to square these up. And here's my little squared up one, just to make sure I do it the same amount. OK. On these little quilts, I always like to go over and press these before I square it up. If I'm doing larger patches like three inches or four inches, I can, I'll go ahead and I'll actually square it up from this point. And I'll show you um, just how I do this. I'm going to be squaring these up to two inches. So what I do is I just put the two inch line right on my seam line, okay? And I'll just trim off. Now, you really only need to trim off one side. Can you see this little stitch right here? Mm -hmm. Okay, that means that that's already been, when I cut in both diagonally and horizontal, this is already a fresh seam. It's only your outside edges that you're just going to have to sliver trim. And when I take it over to iron it, I, oops, I got a little piece in there, um, I lose just a little bit there. And I want to make sure that I have a good two inch finish. So I'm just going to take a couple over to my ironing mat and press them open and then we'll press them and we'll square them up again. So again I want the dark on top. I'm setting my seam and then I'm just going to press. And we're not we're just talking about the width of a couple of threads. But it all adds up. Okay, so I'll get those. Take them back over. And I'm going to use the same ruler just like I did before. This time I'm just putting my two inch right on that open seam that I just pressed, and I'm going to square it up. Now you can tell right now that it's, it, this is more steps because you have to square around all four sides, right? But perfection's worth it, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Especially when you make small blocks. Yes, especially when you make the little teeny ones. Okay, I'm just going to do one more. And I believe I have all the other ones all squared up. 
Okay, and the final one. When you're doing this, I want to point this out as well. Not only am I lining up, you can see this two inch line right here, but I'm also, when I do my second cut, I'm making sure that this diagonal line is going through that, that corner of my patch. I don't really want to square it up over to here because we're going to lose that corner. So just make sure you have another place to look, and that's that diagonal line. Um, the more places that you can reference on your ruler compared to your patch, the better your cut's going to be, right? Okay, so those are all ready to go. Get rid of that on the floor. We can do an Eleanor. Okay, now we're going to line up these little patches so they look like that. Does that look like it does in your pattern? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm going to make four sets of these. Just making sure that I have my seams going in the right direction. Okay, does that look like the picture in, the, in our catalog or our little instructions? Okay, so I am just going to take these over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to flip the one on the right over the one on the left and do a quarter inch seam. And I'm going to do that four times. I get to sew. So I just came back in from QuiltCon. It was really a fun experience. And if you guys, it's coming to Pasadena next year, yeah. so you can just go right on up to QuiltCon. It was really fun. Um, I had sent in a quilt in that it was hanging, and Ken, my husband, came with me, and um, I made him come into the show. I said, okay, you have to buy a pass to come into the show because I really wanted my picture taken with my quilt, right? So anyway, so we're looking and they, it wasn't like um, just a straight rows of quilts. They kind of had them at all at different angles and I'm kind of going, where is this quilt? I couldn't find it. So I thought, well, maybe they changed their minds or something. <laughs> <laughs> and Kansas, it's gotta be here somewhere. Cause I got a note saying they received it. I mean, I knew it was Austin. Anyway, we finally found it. So I got my picture taken with it and then um, I kind of, then I decided I need to go back and take a picture of the little sign that's by the quilt, you know, because it had your name on it and stuff. I was just such a groupie on my own quilt, but it was fun. And, um, but then I walked by a couple of times and then I was getting really interested in the comments that people were saying about my quilt, you know, because they didn't know who I was from Adam. So, but anyway, and I was so proud when they took pictures of it. That made me feel really good. <laughs> So a couple of my, they were talking to, I go, oh, how'd they make that? I said, well, as a matter of fact, there's a pattern coming out from Quilt in the Day, so you can be looking for that. So they were all excited. Okay, so I'm going to press these open, and which way does it say to press? To the blue, I think, if I remember correctly. Did it say to the blue? What should say to the blue? Medium. 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 In this case, it's blue today, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to have the blue on top. And just press it open. I'll do that to all four. But the funniest thing that happened, I went from there, and then I went and I taught uh, miniatures on a cruise out of the Western Caribbean. And... Um, I only went on one little, oops, one little land tour, but on my little land tour to go see the turtles, there was a group of eight Amish people, and they were kind of standing by us, and I just, I had to go talk to them. I just, I wanted to know where they were from, so I said, oh, where are you from? And they said, oh, we're from Lancaster, and I said, oh, I've been to Lancaster, and I really wanted to ask them things like, how are you handling the lights in the room, you know, because they're not supposed to have lights. But they were so cute. They had their little Crocs on, their full garb on, but they had their Crocs and they were wading in the water. And then they were sunning outdoors and <laughs> they were just darling. I talked to them quite a bit. Okay. So now I have my geese done and I have these done, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So does that look right? If you look at your picture, mm -hmm. yes. I flip here to here. I'm just going to make four of these, okay? Anyway, I think they were really excited. Um, but after we went to 
the turtle place, they have this big tourist attraction and they have a little town called Hell, like H-E-L-L. -L. <laughs> so I got, and they're really, you can't really take their pictures, they don't, they're not supposed to take their pictures, but I got under, I told Ken to go stand underneath the post office box sign that said Hell, <laughs> and I was pretending that I was taking a picture of him but indeed, I was taking a picture of the Amish people talking to the coconut man underneath the sign of oh. hell. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. I'll try and get that printed out. So oh, I just thought it was, I thought it was so fun. So fine, but so they kind of befriended me because everybody else has kind of looked at them, you know, like, who are these people? But I was kind of their friend, and I, I tell them, I said, you know, we have, we're doing a sewing class down in the conference room. I said, come on down, you know. So they came on down and did like a whole little tour, and they just could not believe we brought on all those sewing machines on there. Um, some of them, I asked them that, and they can use gener a propane generator. Okay. That's legal. Um, electrical generators are not. So they did, but th um, a lot of them still sell on the treadles. Right. Okay, I'm almost done. Anyway, I just thought it was really interesting. They're really sweet. And they said, oh, if you ever come back to Lancaster, you have to come stay with us. And I said, heck yeah. <laughs> I go, are you going to make me blueberry pie? I love Amish blueberry pie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big pie person, but blueberry pie in the land of Amish is great. Okay, now this is the only thing you're going to kind of fight with. And I have, but I do it so all your seams are going to lock later on. You're going to set your seams and you're going to press it so it's going towards the geese patch. Okay, it's kind of going to want to fight. I recommend steam at this point. Respectfully, <laughs> do the steam, set it, okay, and just press open. Switch. Switch. I don't think it's me switching. I go, wait, I have the geese on top. <laughs> All right. So there you go, that's your four quarters. And I just want to show you, when you're making that seam, I'll go back over to where Orion is. Um, if you go, if you make that seam so it's really close to where this cross is over, okay? Mm -hmm. Then when you go to open it up, can you see how nicely that's going to match for you? Yeah. Okay? So here's all the pieces that we need. So we're just going to lay the block out. So it goes like this, and it's going to go like that. Mm. And there's our block. That's, That's all it is to it. And I did go ahead and I opened up the middle like mm. we, we've been doing. But isn't that a great block? Yeah, it's beautiful. beautiful. So that's really fun. Okay, so that's our first one. That's probably the most I'm going to put up on the board. Just to inspire you, there it is. Okay, that's probably the most involved one that we're going to do today. No. Okay, the next one we're going to do is Streak of Lightning. I believe that's the next one in your stack. Okay, this is just super, super easy. Okay, you cut pieces um, with all different widths. And the first one that you're going to do is just a background, a dark, and a background. And I'm going to cut these pieces down so it's an inch and a half wide, okay? It's much easier to make it a little wider and cut it down than to cut it exactly and get that all lined up perfectly, right? Because it gets just, no matter how you try, it gets a little off. So that's our first thing that we're going to do. And for unit two, it's a little bit wider, but this time we're going to start with a dark brown, a background and a dark brown. But this time we need to cut two out of it. Okay, so there we have two. It's not getting much easier than this, is it? Okay, so here's our next one. And it's even wider because now we're going to be cutting 
three pieces out of it, and here are my three pieces. Okay? So now we have everything that we need. Remember, we're doing six inch blocks. These are all cut at one and a half. So that should, I should end up with a good six inch block at that point. Okay, so now it's the fun thing of putting them together. And if you follow your illustration, I'll do it so it's facing the camera for you. So here's my first one. Okay, here's my second one. And what it's doing is actually stepping down. Okay, and then here's my third one which is really the same as my first, but I've just turned it around. Okay, so that's where that came from. And then here's my next one, that we just made one of those. And then we continue to step down. And finally, it looks like that. So wasn't that an easy way to do that one? Yeah. Okay, um, probably the trickiest thing to do is when you go to sew these together to keep them in the right order. But you'll know right away because it won't be yeah. stepping down correctly. Okay, I sewed them in pairs. Switch. Um, you know, at first. Switch. Okay, so this is what that one's once it's all sewn together. This is what that block looks like. It's That's kind of cool. like a streak of lightning, uh -huh. right? Okay, yeah. we can do that one. That can be. I would do them in the order that, you're, that I'm showing you today because you'll do the, the one with the most involved. You can reward yourself with this one. Okay? <laughs> Very cool. Okay, next one. Okay, that's our next block we're going to do. Wait, we'll see it again. Doop. That's a nice block, huh? Now, in your instructions, um, you can either choose to do um, the center square like your background, or you can do like another light fabric in there. Or if you had a fussy cut, you could do it there too. I mean, it's optional. This is like the, the real pattern of the block is that. And that's easily done. We're just going to take both our background and our medium fabrics, and I've just placed those right sides together. And this time, I've just drawn a line in right halfway of the distance so I can draw these diagonal lines for my reference for sewing. So I'm going to go ahead and sew just one quarter inch on both sides. And typically when I do this sewing, I'll do this seam that continues seam first just to get everything all established. And I get it as close as I can so I can do my pivot, leave my needle down and pivot right on that line. And then I'll continue down the other way. And then I'll go back up here and go around here. Okay, I know sometimes if I do that first, it gets a little bunchy in here. Just the nature of the fabric, I think. So that's all sewn. And then I'm just going to cut it. Okay. And this one's actually, this is a pretty big patch. So I might just go ahead, I'm going to be squaring these up to two and a half. I would probably just square it up, you know, using the ruler without opening it up. So I just have to make one cut instead of four. Once I get to that big, I feel comfortable doing that. Okay, so that's just, we're going to square those four up. And now we're just going to lay our block out. Okay. Actually, I'll, I'll start in the middle. I think that's going to be easier. And I picked a, a background that has a little bit of direction to it, just to show you that you can maintain that direction. Can you see how these are like ovals? They're not really dots. I love working with directional fabrics and to see how it plays into your box. It's really fun. Okay, so, so if I was to put this one down here, can you see how these little ovals are going up and down? But those are going to, okay, so I don't really like that look. So I would move this one to over here, keeping my ovals all going in that direction. Okay. And that looks pretty good. My ovals are still intact. Okay, and finally, there you go. So that's how you can deal with the background fabric. The nature, of when we came back to, I'm just referring back to this step right here. The fact that I went up and down, that's how I got ovals going in both directions. Okay, that's how that works. We like to know how things work, don't we? Because you don't really notice um, 
things going in different directions unless everything's in one direction but one's like, like if I was to turn this middle one, then you go, something's wrong. I don't know what it is, but something's wrong. Okay, so that's pretty easy, right? Okay, next one. This one's called Honey's Choice. Okay, again, we're just doing peace triangle squares. So, with that in mind, I'm going to be starting with the two squares that are the same size. I'm just matching a background to a medium. You kind of missed the quote block. Oh, again. we'll go back to here. Okay, we're going to we're going to be making these pinwheels in the corners. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to do two sets of these. Remember how many sets we needed before um, to make eight? Well, I need to actually have 16 in the block. So you're going to need to do two of those. Um, but just for purpose of example, here's the one. And this is just to remind you when you go, when you do your lines, you've drawn them, we've sewn on both sides, we need to cut horizontally and vertically first. I'll show you why that happens. I'm just going to cut it just if I just did diagonals, because this happens. It's really a common thing that people go, oh, I'm just cutting on my drawn line, because that's what we always do. Well, you get this little thing, and I call them little Chinaman hats, because they kind of remind me of a Chinaman hat, <laughs> doesn't it? Think of the rice patties. So anyway, so then you, when you do that, you have to carefully put it back on you have to use your mat. I mean, you can recover, but it's easier to recover. I mean, just to do it right from the beginning, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And in your instructions, you'll have all the sizes of what sizes we're going to be doing. Okay, so then we have the eight. And you're going to do that twice, so we have 16 of them. Okay. So just for purpose of example, I've already gone and squared some up. And I just want to talk about doing pinwheels in general. And when you do pinwheels in general, that's not right, is it? Nope. Okay. I'm going to actually sew this one together for you. But when you look at this pinwheel, can you tell that in this upper left-hand corner, the dark one is going this way? as opposed to starting your pinwheel like that? Yeah. Okay, when you do that, and we're going to go ahead and swirl all the seams on the back, by starting and laying out your pinwheel, all your seams are going to go in the same direction, instead of having half go one way and half go another way. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this for you, and show you how that works. But I do that, that's like a general rule I do on all pinwheels. Okay, so I'm just flipping the one on the right over the one on the left. Okay, this is really good. These seams are going to lock for you, so that will keep it in place. <coughs> Boy, that cough going around. Bad stuff. It's a 90-day cough. <laughs> How what that's day? That's what it's called. What day are you on? Uh, you are? Mm. Well, I don't want the 90-day cough. I don't want the two-day cough. Okay. Ooh, I got a little squishy there. Um, I don't know, but when I was flying back from Fort Lauderdale the other day, oh my gosh, I wish I had a mask on. Because the person behind me was going, ah, 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 ah. I'm like ducking in my seat. Okay, so here's the two halves, and then I'm just going to flip the one on the right over the one on the left. And I want to make sure that my seam on top is go away from me and the seam underneath is going in the opposite direction. Okay, so that's my final seam. And you just want to make sure that stays in place. And you can see I'm always using a little bit of fabric when I begin and end, just because I think you get a better start to your seam when you do that. And if you look at this, the way that it was sunk, and you see I really tried to make sure that that seam I just did 
was a good intersection because I want to have a good center there and you open it up and that's pretty good cool. pretty good so here's one that's all pressed and this is what I was talking about see how all the seams go in the same direction mm -hmm. that's how you do that by laying out that pinwheel in the beginning Mm -hmm. It makes it easier to open. You should have a little pinwheel back there. So basically to do the block, you just, you have these four pinwheels and then I had this, there's some little rectangles that I'm doing for the sides and a little square that goes in the middle. Okay? I just really wanted to talk about pinwheels with that block. General pinwheel lesson. Okay, the next one, Ozark Maple Leaves. Okay, this is one of my favorite blocks of all time. Just the way it goes together. So here's our block. And it's like a tessellation because it's the same shape, but you're just alternating light and dark fabrics. Okay? So if you look at one-fourth, you can see how that's predominantly light. Switch. Okay. Okay? Can you see how that's like a light leaf in there? Mm -hmm. And then if you look at this one, this is like a dark leaf in there. And you kind of go, oh my gosh, this is going to be hard to achieve. But it's really not bad at all. So we're just, I'm going to start out with just working on the dark ones. And I have these little smaller squares that I put on. I drew a line, and I'm just going to sew. So after it's sewn, I'm going to open it up, and it looks like that. Before I cut off any excess fabric back here, it's real important that you push this open and make sure that it goes all the way out to the corner. Because once that's cut off, you have no reference out there. And I think Orion can get really close on it, but can you see how I sew just a little bit to the side that I'm, or the corner I'm going to be trimming off later on? And that accounts for that fold. Okay? So that's how that goes. And after I felt good, then I'm going to go ahead and cut it off because I don't need that excess and press it open really good. Okay, here's one that's really good. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's what that is. And I'm going to go through the same process with my light one. So here's like the light one. It's exactly the same. I'm just reversing the colors. And then on each one, I'm going to add, if it's a light, predominantly light center, I'm going to add a light rectangle. And if it's a predominantly dark, went too far, went too far. There is a little dark same piece in here. It's on top. Is it right on top? It's in here. Well, anyway, I'll show you with the light, and then I'll just go back and show you with the dark. So I'm going to sew light to there. And once that's sewn, I will add that one on. Okay? So when it's all good and sewn, it's going to look like this. And we can remember how we started with this with the dark here, mm -hmm. where we're going to do the exact same thing, and it's going to look like that. Okay? And you're going to make two light and two dark per block. So when you lay this out, I'm just going to lay these right on top. Can you see how this and then this one goes this way, and that's how you get that extra little leaf in there. That's all there is to it. So if we were to fold this block, okay, so here's our dark, and then we're sewing our light to it. You make two rows of that, and then we sew it together. Okay? Very easy, and I also opened up the bit on the back. Okay, so that's all there is to that one. I have seen these, this block done really pretty, and um, they must plant it on a flannel wall or something because it has like all different fall color leaves. Right. That's really nice. Yeah, isn't that nice? Isn't yeah, that nice? So that's great. So that's what you're going to be working on today, and I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. And yeah. learn some tidbits. Yeah, great.